Since when am I Faust? Chapter 4, Day with Amar. A few hours after Luna and I went to get a midnight snack, we returned to my bedroom. Tia was still sleeping soundly as she laid wrapped in the bedsheets. She still had a happy smile on her face. The alicorn let out a quiet purr as she enjoyed the warmth of the covers, and Luna let out a huff in disappointment. Seeing that her so-called prank was a failure, the Princess of the Night stepped into the room with a frown. She yawned and let up her horn, grabbing a hold of the cocoon of bedsheets wrapped around Tia. I looked at the princess with a questioning glance, and she smirked at me, nudging my side as I raised an eyebrow at her. Luna then jolted her head upwards and pulled the bedsheets away from Tia. In an instant, the blankets were tugged away from the solar princess, and the white mare let out a stifled gasp, as she woke up, finding herself to be rapidly spinning around. Luna gave a satisfied smile as her sister clumsily rolled off the edge of the bed, and I looked on with amusement and a hint of concern as I waited for Tia to get up. A moment passed, and the two of us heard a groan from the floor. Setting up, Celestia set her chin on the edge of the bed, and she grumbled as she puffed out her cheeks. Oh, Lulu, is it time for morning already? Luna yawned and chuckled at her sister's question. Somehow, the mare seemed to be more concerned about having to wake up than she was about being thrown out of bed. Shaking her head, Luna smiled, and she walked forward and stood on the opposing side of the mattress. Yeah, sister, tis... <laughs> it is time to raise the sun. Celestia's face grew a faint smile as she listened to her sister try to speak, and it turned mischievous as she let her head roll to the side. She rested on one cheek and she began to playfully pout. Oh, why can't any pony else do it for once? Just let me sleep in already. Tia, you know why. Oh. I found myself chuckling at Celestia's childish behavior, and she looked up at me as I stuffled a giggle. Her pout became a slight smirk, and she grunted when she stood up. Tia let out a tired groan as she stretched her neck from side to side and then she yawned and wiped the sleep from her eyes. She looked over at Luna with a tired gaze, and she smiled as she shrugged. All right, Lulu, you win. The princess turned towards the balcony and walked outside. Luna followed her elder sister out of the room, and the two stood side by side as they let their horns. From inside, I watched with rapt attention as the two began changing it from night to day. It was still fascinating, and I couldn't help but wonder how much magic a pony would need to be able to move the sun and moon. The whole exchange lasted for only a minute or two, but it was worth it. As the girls finished tending to their duties, I stepped closer to the door as the sisters walked back inside. I smiled as I opened my mouth to speak, but before I could say anything, the doors to my bedroom suddenly burst open. Surprised, I jumped at the sound, and I turned my head to see a group of attendants flooding into the room. A secretary wearing glasses led them in, and she pushed the spectacles up on her nose. This caused them to shimmer, and she looked directly at Tia. The alicorn groaned and dove for the bed, but the attendant suddenly swarmed her. She didn't reach the mattress, and they practically pulled the white mare out of the room. She whined as they dragged her off to her duties, and I watched the whole thing play out with a stunned and somewhat dumbfounded expression on my face. Gathering my wits about me, I turned to Luna. She seemed eager to spend more time with her mom, but at the same time, it was obvious that she was in desperate need of some sleep. The princess wobbled back and forth as she tried to stay awake, and with a slight misstep, she almost fell to the ground. Thankfully, though, before she could hit the floor, Lauren caught her with her magic. A fiery glow wrapped itself around the mare, and Lauren levitated the sleepy princess onto the bed. Luna groaned, wanting to stay awake as she reached out to her mom. But Faust smiled at the gesture, while she tucked her daughter in, and she stroked her mane. Have a good sleep, Lulu. I'll see you later. She kissed her daughter on the forehead and smiled happily, as she sat back up. Luna was still trying to push herself to stay awake, hoping to catch up on so many years that should have been spent together. But she couldn't. Her body gave out, and the ancient mare laid back. As soon as her head touched the pillow, the princess could feel the lore of sleep pulling at her. While Luna began to nod off, I found myself in control again, and I looked up at the room. The curtains were wide open, and the bright sunlight flowed through. Flaring my horn, I grabbed the curtains with my magic and slipped them shut. The room became enveloped in darkness, and I heard Luna whisper a quiet, Thank you. At the gesture. With that, I made my way out of the room and quietly closed the door behind me. About two hours later, I found myself wandering aimlessly through the castle. I was bored. Tia was busy, Luna was sleeping, and I, I didn't have anything to do. Lauren suggested that I try to do some artwork or read a book, but I wasn't exactly keen to stay inside all day again. I wanted to get out and explore this new world, so that's exactly what I went to do. Cadence was walking in the courtyard that overlooked the castle grounds, and as she walked, she went over her shopping list, checking things off as she went along. And done. Looks like everything is pretty much set to go. She smiled happily to herself, and looked up only to spot a guard approaching her. He had an odd expression on his face as she was about to ask him what was wrong, but then the two heard her name being called from across the courtyard. Cadence! The pink alicorn looked up from her clipboard and glanced around, wondering who had just called her name. 
She looked around with a bit of a confused expression, and then she spotted the smaller alicorn running out of the castle to meet her. As I ran towards Cadence, I noticed a guard standing near her rear back and grit his teeth as he strolled away. However, I quickly brushed it off and turned to the pink mare. She smiled at me and greeted. Oh, hi Lauren, how are you? Eh, I'm alright, just a bit bored. I don't have any duties to attend to, so I've been just waiting around. How about you? Cadence bumped against my shoulder. Actually, I just finished up with what I had plans. Would you like to do something together? My eyes lit up. Yeah, sure. Okay, what would you like to do? That question actually kind of stumped me. I wasn't expecting to get this far, so I put my hoof against my chin and looked upwards and thought. Uh, oh, I know. How about cashing in on those 10 bets and getting free ice cream? I exclaimed. Cadence just looked at me with a stare that said, Really? And deadpanned. Lauren, you always get free ice cream. And besides... Cadence looked at me and then down at herself and breathed out a laugh. Does it look like I have any bits on me? I looked at her, and sure enough, the only thing that she had with her was the clipboard. I then laughed in defeat. <laughs> alright, alright. But I still want my ten bits. Cadence shook her head with a slight roll of her eyes. <sighs> no, I did. No what? I was thinking about exploring or visiting the city, but Lauren suddenly took control before I could voice that opinion. She looked Cadence in the eyes and tapped her hoof on the alicone shoulder. Nodding, she gave a wide grin and she shouted, Tag your at! And then she started running. Cadence raised an eyebrow and she grinned in disbelief. Seriously, Lauren? A short distance away, Lauren stopped and turned to face Cadence as she ran in place. One thing that you will learn when you get to be my age, Cadence, is that there's nothing wrong with being childish. Cadence grinned and lowered herself to the ground, playfully waving her tail. Oh, I have no problem being childish, but you should learn a little more about a pony before challenging them to tag. Especially, me. I was suddenly given full control again, and I wasn't so sure about playing this game with her anymore. She suddenly launched herself towards me like a missile, and I ran. So, why tag exactly? Simple. It's good practice for your coordination, and I figured that if you had enough practice, your dumbass will stop throwing me down the damn staircase. Oops. I looked to see if Cadence was still behind me, and was startled when I saw her right on my tail. She had a goofy grin on her muzzle and crazy eyes. Challenging me to tag was a bad idea! She sang. My eyes bulged out in surprise, and I ran faster. But it didn't work, though. I felt like I was in some sort of horror movie where I could never get away from her no matter how fast I ran. I decided that if I couldn't outrun her, then I'd evade her. So running up to one of the park benches, I leapt and used it as a springboard to jump over the nearby hedge. I landed and kept running. As I ran, I heard the sound of Cadence landing, and she was once again right behind me, and closing the distance. In an effort to evade her, I suddenly turned to the left and then shot to the right. Cadence went left and dug her hooves into the ground when she saw me change direction. I rounded the corner of one of the hedges and dove into some nearby bushes. I held my breath as I looked through the leaves to see if she followed me. I saw a flash of pink run by, but then there was silence. From my vantage point, I couldn't see anything, and I held my breath and wait. You're gonna have to try harder than that if you want to lose me. Cadence whispered. My ears twitched as I felt her breath brush against them. I felt a chill go down my back and leapt out of the bush, running to get away. What? Cadence simply stayed in the bush, laughing at how freaked out I was. As I glanced back, I saw her head peeking out from the bush. I'm going to get you. She said in a sing-song voice. Oh no! Here I come. She was now out of the bush and her wings were unfurling. Stay away! I cried, but she didn't listen. As I glanced back once again, I only got to see Cadence's smiling face before being tackled to the ground. We fell in a heap, and we tumbled down the face of a small hill. Once we got to the bottom, we laid on the grass, and I found myself lying on my back. Cadence was in a similar position, and we both were out of breath from running. My sides were aching, and my heart was beating loudly in my ears. Cadence was breathing heavily and just staring up at the sky for a moment, before she reached up and touched my shoulder. Tag. She breathed out, and then I laughed. Alright, you win. I couldn't see her because I was facing the sky, but I could somehow sense her smile in recognition. And she started to chuckle to herself. I haven't played that game since the first day I met Twilight. Oh yeah? And how long did she... did she last? I asked. Didn't even make a minute. And I gave her a 30 second head start. I just laughed. We stayed like that, looking up at the clouds for a few minutes as we caught our breath. Tilting my head upward, I looked at where we ended. Surprisingly, we were lying in the grass just in front of Discord's statue. When I saw that, I rolled over, stood up, and walked over to it. For one thing, he was damn big. I didn't have much to compare him to, but I guess he would have been close to 12 feet tall. Cadence got up as well and walked over to my side. She draped a wing over my back, and 
felt a pang of sadness well up inside of me. Cadence looked at me consolingly, and asked, You know? At Cadence's question, I felt Lauren take control. Her eyes began to water, and she looked down and nodded. Yeah. Yeah, I know him. Looking up at the statue, Lauren blinked her tears away, and spoke with a quivering voice. Hello, Discord. It's been a while. I had hoped that we would have reunited under better circumstances. I just wanted to say thank you for protecting Tia and Lulu from me while they were growing up. I know that they didn't always see it that way, but thank you, Discord. Lauren lowered her head with a bow, and then gave me back control. I stood up straight and looked at the statue. My breathing was shaky and I simply stared, trying to deal with the sudden bursts of emotion that I would get from my passenger. I looked over to Cadence, and her face was covered in shock. She then collected herself and smiled sheepishly. She moved her wing back and forth on my back, much in the same way that someone would rub someone's shoulder to try to comfort a friend. You okay? She asked. I looked at Cadence and gave a bittersweet smile. Yeah, I'm okay. Come on, let's go. Bystanders are starting to stare. The two alicorns walked away. Not knowing where to go, and unbeknownst to the two of them, a tear appeared on the statue. Cadence and I walked alongside each other for a few minutes in silence. We simply continued down the pathway with no real destination in mind, before we found ourselves looking up at the Candlelight Royal Library. I then glanced at her. Wanna take a look? She shrugged her shoulders. Sure. I ran up the stairs and trotted up to the door. I tried to pull the doors open, but they didn't budge. Again and again I tried to pull open the door, but it was to no avail. Cadence walked up and raised an eyebrow, and then walked past me and pushed the door open. Moving her foreleg, she gestured for me to walk inside. Oh, damn it! Ah, uh, the good old confusion with pushing and pulling doors. It never gets old. Now let's get on to our very intelligent donators. Top donators TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Austin Rowland, Magazine, Crazy Killer 557, Nike Kruger, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hadge, Runescythe9852, Hansel Norman, Stephen Bingham, Michael Dale Aramar, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Ponyman, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Run and Person Man Guy, Easy, Skyuchia, Leslie Perkett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Katania 9, Lightskin, Monster Kid, Needs a Life, Milan Biehenek, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all very much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.